American 11, are you trying to call? Nobody moves. Everything will be okay. If you try to make any moves, you danger yourself and the airplane. Is there an ancient mystery that lies behind everything? From 9-11 to the plague of COVID-19 to the forces that are now transforming American culture and world civilization. Are the shakings that have come upon America and the world a warning, a wake-up call of something yet to come and that leads to calamity? Not be silent. You know what's coming. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our today today's first guest is a guest that I, I think a lot of you know his his books. You, you probably recognize the the, the the face. He's an international best-selling author, um, and I believe he has a unique ability to to break down the political climate that we live in mm -hmm. from a, from a prophetic basis. A lot of times, people yeah. read the, the the Bible, the Scripture, the, the irrefutable Word of God, known as the Bible. And they struggle to figure out how to apply it to their daily life. Yep. And I feel like this is a gifting and an anointing that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has given today's uh, best-selling author and, and guest. I really do. He has, he has a powerful belief of prophecy that is resonating with people all around the world. And he has a new book he's working on. Without yeah. any further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Jonathan Kahn. Welcome on to the Thrive Time Show. How are you, sir? Hey, great to be with you, Clay. Always. You're, you know, you're a best-selling author, but you're also working on this new documentary. This documentary is going to be uh, amazing called The Harbingers of Things to Come. Tell us about this yeah. explosive documentary and, and what this is all about. Yeah, well, this, this uh, Clay, this just uh, it came out um, this past Thursday, and it's having one more showing in theaters across America this Thursday or, come, or tomorrow. Then we'll go to church to go to other things. Uh, but I'm just so, and and, it, and this is kind of blew us away. What it came out on Thursday, the number the uh, Doctor Strange of Marvel's you know superhero was the number one movie in America. The number two movie in America was The Harbingers of Things to Come. Oh. Um, and and it, it was my and, and across the country, the, it ended when it was ending. We got reports of people just breaking out into prayer and intercession for revival. This is uh, it, it, so. There's one more chance to see it. It's tomorrow. It's all over America. But it is a prophetic explosion. It is what is happening, what has happened, where we are, where we are going, what does the future hold, and what do believers, and well, even non-believers need to know about it, what do believers need to know for what is coming? So I'm kind of taking um, the viewer on a journey uh, through America to these mysteries, which have to do with the future, what, we're actually what's happening and where we're going. And I'm able to do things, I mean, you know, you know, Clay, I mean, of course, you, people know me from writing, but, you know, in a movie, you can actually, you don't, not, you're not just reading about the harbingers or what's that, you're actually seeing them happen mm -hmm. um and so they're going to see that i'm actually there's something in there that i have never i've held on to for years it's it's a clip it's a video it's actually was captured on video a prophetic uh, unfolding about what was going to happen i mean it's like mind-boggling and i've never released it and i figured if we're doing a movie let's do it so that's there too so it's real exciting because also people are bringing people who don't know the lord or don't even know anything about this and they're like yeah i'll go to a movie um so uh it is going to be it is also you know, it's it's like a, a prophetic explosion on on the movie screen. And uh, your film discusses everything, uh, kind of the, the mystery of, of 9-11 to COVID-19 to, to tying it into what lies ahead. Uh, if you could tell us uh, just just enough to, uh, you know, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a film we need to watch, but yeah. tell us uh, about how, how your film ties in 9-11, COVID-19 and, and what, what lies yeah. ahead. Yeah, well, well, one thing is that for those who know The Harbinger, which is the first book I wrote, and the last book I wrote was The Harbinger 2, is the sequel. Um, the thing is, the Harbingers have not stopped. And that and the the overall the overall thing to know is that what happened in the last days of ancient Israel before it was destroyed is now happening in America. And it's actually unfolding. There were nine 
harbingers of judgment, warning the nation. Those nine harbingers have all appeared in America. That's the beginning of the harbinger. Most of the movie is not the har- most of the movie is what's happened after. It has not stopped. And I'll give you I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the the classic signs of judgment is that years before the nations really co- you know collapse, uh, there's a warning, and the warning comes in a strike. It comes in the form of an enemy attack on the land. It's it's temporary. It's a shaking. Happens again and again in the Bible. Well, it happened in America with 9/11. But one of the, the you know this is years before. Now one of the questions I asked in the original book, The Harbinger, and I answered in the last I showed on the movie is that how long is it? between that first strike that comes and then the when the greater shaking start coming on the land. Well, the answer is that with ancient Jerusalem, the first strike came in 605 BC. The greater shakings came in 586 BC. So that's a 19 year period, 19 years linked to judgment, 19 years. So, so when was 9-11? It was 2001. So when is the 19th year? The 19th year is the year 2020, the year that COVID, the plague, cities on fire, all begins in that. And one of the things that Jeremiah, the prophet, said was going to happen in the 19th year with Israel is that in the 19th year, a plague is going to come on the land. Well, we're in, we, it's all happened. And not only that, what's the name of this plague? What is it? It's COVID and then the number 19. Mm-hmm. So even the timing, Clay, for years, I'm looking at 2020 and saying, is this going to unfold? There are shaking, and it exactly, in fact, exactly did. In fact, when when 2020 started, that's when I started writing the Harbinger two because because of having a strong sense that shakings were coming. And two and a half months later, the shakings began. If I could uh, personally attack you for a moment, Aaron, is that okay if we attack I, our guests? I think, I think we, we normally do. Please, feel free, please, please. Well, what happens is this is what I, I see within the Christian community, and I I I, I maybe. I'm oversimplifying this, yeah. but I see two camps that are prevalent in the Christian faith. One is what mm-hmm. I call hopium, yeah. where they go, oh, I tell you what, we win in the end, baby. Yeah, We win in the end, baby. Oh, God's in control. God's in control, baby. We it's all in the end. part of the plan. Mm-hmm. The white hat's got this, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're going, really? And then there's another group that says, oh, we're screwed. <laughs> That's why I haven't showered at all. I haven't showered this month. I haven't gone outside. I've eaten only fried food for four consecutive weeks. So I, I oh, don't even goodness. call my mom back anymore. It doesn't matter. Right. I'm done. So there's like two, you know, there's the, there's the defeatist. And then there's the one that believes there's some secret mysterious plan. And this is all part of the plan. It's great. It's, you know, well, how, how should Christians be uh, reacting right now? What, what, what should Christians be doing yeah. at this moment? Yeah, you know what? You know, it's, you, you, you know, you say it your own way. You don't with with your own kind of style with it. But this is actually a very profound thing. That's this has been from the beginning. I mean, where you have these two elements um, and balancing it, and that is that you know, and, and then the answer is if you ask me, I'm saying I'm both. You know, and that is yeah. On, on one hand. You know, things are not getting better in the culture. We can't pretend they are. They're getting worse. America is racing away from God, racing away from morality. There, of course, there are people, there are revivals, but that's happening. On the other hand, when you said, yeah, we do win in the end. On the other hand, that God is in control and God also works all things out, out for good. So, you know, what I will say is, you know, you know when you when people see or they read the harbinger or they're going to see this movie um you know some people get scared you know because like whoa other people have the opposite reaction say well you know what actually it tells me god's in charge of everything you know and so but the it always ends with hope and the thing is that yeah i will say the dark is getting darker right now but that's not a hopeless thing because if that's the case then listen the lights if we're the light then we have to get brighter. You know, the greatest time, the greatest people in the entire age of, of since, since the beginning, since the first century, have been when there have been times of darkness. You know, they didn't live, you know, the, the prophets didn't live in Christian times. Uh, Paul, the apostles didn't live in Christian times. They lived in cultures that were against God. But that's when we shine the brightest. So I believe it could be the greatest time. You know, here's, I'll put it another way, in, in very very kind of different way. When is the most exciting time part of a movie? It's the last 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Well, this is the last 15 minutes, you know, so let's make the most of it. Now, Aaron, I'm going to ask uh, my ne- next question, okay. which will allow you to, to one-up me during the final seven oh, minutes of the show. Yeah. So That's I'm going to ask my final question, and you can one-up me, okay? Okay. So uh, there's a lot of stuff, like the, the you have Roe versus Wade right now. Mm-hmm. Talk, there's a lot of discussion of will this be overturned? And there's a lot of people in the prophetic world. I'm just going to throw out some names. Uh, Hank Kuhneman. Yep. Amanda Grace. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lance Wall now, Robin Bullock, Robin Bullock, who are talking about this is a, a, a profoundly prophetic event, Roe versus Wade. This is an important thing. You're, you're seeing that. 
Uh, I'd, I'd love to get your take, Jonathan, as, as it relates to Roe versus Wade and, and, and what you see for the future of America. Where, where do you see Roe versus Wade and that potentially being overturned relating to the future of America? Well, you know, you know great, great question. Uh, a few things. One, one of the things is, you know, God always say that it's always an uh, absolute thing in the Bible that one of the, 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 the most um, grievous things that brings national judgment is the killing of, ch of one's children, um, which happened in ancient Israel. They were lifting, they were sacrificing them. Well, we're replaying it in our own way. But, you know, they lifted up, you know, thousands of them. We have lifted up millions of them. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I that I show actually in the movie and in the books is that there is a link in what's happened. If you follow, if you, and I won't go into the detail, but if you look at when the very first day that, that uh, this, this COVID came upon America um, and linked to the date that has to do with abortion, where it struck the most. I mean, the places it struck and you, and you combine this with, uh, with uh, what America has done with its children. It's amazing. It's mind boggling. But one of the things is that I'll, I'll put it, I'll put it this way. There is something I talk about at different times, which is the called the Jubilee. The Jubilee was that in the 50th year, and things are undone. Like if somebody really messed you up, 50th year, they got to they, they gotta make good on it. It's undone. Well, abortion was legalized in 1973. The 50th year is actually this year. It ends on in January uh, 2023. So this is when things are undone. So that, that gives me hope that this could be undone. But, and so it's a really important thing. At the same time, this is not ending abortion. Abortion is going to go on in all those states that are not, that are blue. Um, so it is a sign that it can be undone. Will it, will there be a change in America? Will it change everything? God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble, pray, seek my face, I will hear from heaven. So the, the big thing is if, so is this a good thing? Absolutely gigantic. Whatever happens, it's good. <laughs> But are we out of are we out of the water? No, because until there's a turning from the heart of America, the laws are not going to save us. You know, the only one who saves us is the Savior. There's got to be revival. So yeah, good, but we're not there yet. Aaron, final uh, four minutes here as we're discussing the the new film, The Harbingers of Things to Come. Yeah. Again, the number two movie in America. That's awesome. Right now, incredible, Crazy. incredible. This movie, what's what it's doing and how it's waking people up. Uh, final four minutes, final two questions. What do you have? Yeah, so my question for you, Jonathan, is, you know, so many people right now are talking about the role that America plays in end times. Because as we look at it, you know, it's kind of hard to go, well, you know, there they mention the United States of America here in Scripture right. in the, you know. So what do you see as the role of America? I mean, obviously, we, we are, you know, one of the most prominent nations. I say the most prominent on Earth right now. But coming into the, as you said, we're in the last 15 minutes of the movie. Uh -huh. What do you see as the part that America plays moving forward from here? Hmm. A great question. America has played, you know, a, a tremendous part in many ways. I mean, first of all, supporting Israel. Where where would we be? Where would Israel be without without this? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, God's in charge. But uh, where would it, where would the world be without America when communism came? You know, when Hitler came. I mean, so yeah. But so so it has been a, a, a tremendous thing. Um, and the thing is, it is still we're still in the the post World War II uh, American order. But here's the thing, the Bible, as you know, there are people who believe otherwise, but there's no clear reference to America. So what that means is in the very end, America is not going to be where it is now. Now, if America falls, it's going to it's going to accelerate everything you read about in the Bible. I mean, you know, the, the, all the things that it talks about, Revelation, a one world. So the thing is that, you know, right now, America has been falling away from God. Um, we have been more blessed than any nation. But the Bible says that too much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. So if we don't turn back, uh, there's going to be a great fall. And if we do fall, it's going to be right in line with with what's what the Bible says about anti prophecy. So kind of what what I have written about, what I have, you know, what the movie and all the and the books that I do are kind of kind of filling the gaps between then and now. Right now, America is racing. Unless there's a change, it's going to happen. And what the Bible says is going to happen. But I pray, my heart is listen. You know, my heart is hope for America if it turns back. You know, we can still, there's still, God can still work. God can still do things and use America, but it's a big if, and that's in our hands. 
Yeah, Aaron, the, the, the movie title is, again, The Harbingers of Things to Come. And Harbinger yes. means announcing a signal, uh, a, a signal of something to come. It's it's a, a person or thing that announces or signals the approach of another. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got final two minutes. I will say that your question <laughs> was better than my questions. It definitely However, uh, I can tell, and I will talk about this offline, but I can tell Jonathan appreciates and likes me more than you. But go ahead and That's ask your next question. Probably true. I don't want to make it about me. Go for so it. So my other question is, <laughs> with regards to the prophets, I know in the Old Testament, you know, you've got all these books of the Bible that were from the prophets, and they were giving, you know, God's wisdom and, and God's foretelling to the nation of Israel, and the king would sometimes listen, sometimes not. Yeah. How does that transfer over into modern day? We see a huge move back towards the prophetic here right now. And what is that voice today? And what is the purpose of that voice as it relates to the church and the body of Christ in present day? Mm. Well, we are living in prophetic times, so we have to be a prophetic people. Um, we have to speak to the culture. It's not, it's not, we're not living in that quote Christian culture anymore, you know. So we have to be radical. We have to be like the prophets. We, you know, you know, I'll, I'll put it, put it this way. You know, we sing in many churches, these are the days of Elijah, which is great. I love the song. But if these are the days of Elijah, we have to become the Elijahs of the day. Amen. It's time that we all, not just, I mean, God raises up voices, you know, and, and, that, and that's it. But we're all to be prophetic. We have to speak truth. We have to shine the light. And we have to very much be like Elijah. And keep in mind, when we sing the days of Elijah, the days of Elijah were actually times of persecution. Yeah. But, but, the, but the, the, the one who will stand, it's like the candle in the, in the daytime, you don't see it. The candle in the night lights up the night. We are called to become the candle in the night. And that's why I believe these could be the greatest signs for those who will stand like Elijah and be the prophets of this generation to speak to the times God will anoint them. They will, it will lift us up and this will be our hour. Uh, Aaron, I'll tell you this. What, not only was your, your second question better than, than my, any of my questions, <laughs> but now we know that Jonathan likes you more than me. So but I'll tell you this. The one, the, the one thing we have going for us. Okay. Yeah. I get more mic time than you. That's true. So that I can find it. It's not about me, folks, but at least I get a little more. <laughs> at least I get one with victory. No, seriously, folks, I, I encourage you. I try to have a little bit of fun, but everybody, this is, these are serious times that we live in. Yeah. And we have got to wake up and get involved. And I think one way to take your, 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 uh, fears and to turn it into action and to turn it into a passion for sharing the gospel is to sit down and watch a film that'll wake you up to what's going on. And again, Amen. check out this film. It's called the harbingers of things to come. Jonathan, I'll give you the final word there, sir. Why should everybody yeah. go see the new film? Thank you so much. Yeah. And I'm encouraging people to bring out people who need to see it, not yeah. bring out the people who don't know. Bring, we have to be lights, bring it out, use this for the purpose of God yeah. and keep up the great work. I like you both. I appreciate it. All right. There it is. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.